Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On this program, Mel Weeb begins his testimony. Our musical guest is Roxana Dane. And Reverend Mabley's sermon is titled, The Christmas Story. Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Mel Weeb. Welcome to a testimony time on Eternally Yours Telecast. I have a very interesting guest today. He's more interesting than I even thought he would be. <laughs> uh, he's done a lot and God has moved on his life. And today I want to welcome Mel Weeb and hear your story. Dear Mel, how did Jesus Christ get hold of your dear heart? Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. At my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. But <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> I was born in Saskatchewan, and uh, all you Saskatchewans out there, and uh, my parents were good Mennonite people, had five children, I was number four, I was not expected to make it through, but mom called out and dedicated me to the Lord if I would live, mm -hmm. and here we are, and, um, and then uh, we moved from Saskatchewan to BC, and uh, when I got into my teens, I kind of moved away from the Lord. I, I, I found church kind of boring, mm -hmm. like a lot of teenagers, and so I just kind of skipped. I got a job on Vancouver Island, and I went over there, and you know, God follows you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if He doesn't lead you, He follows you, I guess. And I got over there, got working, had a girlfriend, all exciting, had a car, and... Um, the girlfriend and I had a fight. It was good because she had three kids and I was just 19 years old. So, um, Sunday night after the fight, I went for a walk. Walked by a little Pentecostal church. The music was coming out of there. And uh, my mom would always call me every once in a while and say, Melvin, are you going to church? Because I didn't want to lie. I would go once in a while. So I went into the back of the church and I listened to the music because I'm a musician. I sat on the back row and I thought, when the music's over, I'll just get out. Because that old guy is going to get up there and preach. And I heard a lot of old guys. Now I'm an old guy myself. <laughs> <laughs> so when the preacher got up, he was 25 years old. And he was running around and shouting. and like This was a Pentecostal church. I, I was from the Mennonite background, so... I thought these guys were crazy. And I listened to him running around and I thought, well, this is pretty interesting, pretty entertaining. He's going to stop preaching. He's going to say, bow your heads and close your eyes. Then I'll get out. So sure enough, he said, bow your heads and close your eyes. And I did. And I was going to get out. Instead of getting out, I stood up and I walked down to the front of the church crying my eyes out. And God had got a hold of me that night. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. They had a small church with a mm -hmm. great big piano. Mm -hmm. This piano was so huge, it didn't fit. So they took the front leg off and put it on the stage. And I was crying underneath this two-legged piano. And I didn't know what to do and what to say. So I said, Lord, if I've never been saved, I want to get saved tonight. Amen. And you did. And that was great. Nobody came and prayed with me. Nobody talked to me. Nobody counseled me. Nobody took my name or anything. It was all over, and I was getting up, and I was almost didn't remember where I was because I was so lost in tears. Mm. And then somebody said, where are you staying? And I said, well, I'm staying not a great place, not mm -hmm. a saved place, not a Christian place. Mm -hmm. And they said, why don't you come and live with us, the family in the church? Oh, what a blessing that was from God. And she was the organist mm -hmm. of the church, mm -hmm. and they never had a piano player. Well, you I played the musician. piano. <laughs> so I moved in with these people. The next Sunday, I was the church pianist. Just like they that. They got me to work just right like away. Just like that, you got into ministry. <laughs> I That's just incredible. got into it. it was That's just incredible. Good. And my life started to change. Mm -hmm. One year later, I was in Bible school. And I, of course, from the background that uh, you don't speak in tongues and all this kind of stuff. These people were telling me I needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people tried to fill me my, themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember going to well, camp. The scripture says the Lord Jesus is the one that baptized, <laughs> immerses us in the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And I, I remember going to New Bay Bible Camp and 
some lady said, hang on, and the other one said, let go, and I couldn't figure out what to do. So I said, you guys figure it out. I'll go and have a hot dog at the concession stand. And uh, I just left it. But a year later, I was in Bible school, a year, a year and a few months. I, I was my first day of Bible school, and Dr. Derek Prince was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was our professor. And uh, he was only there for a short time, but... He said, if you want to start off your Bible school right, you need to come down here and get filled with the Holy Spirit. So I went down to the front, and I was actually shaking. I didn't know what was going on, but I was going like this, and I thought, you know, I'm too young to be shaking like this. And But I sensed it was the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and I couldn't speak English very good. I was just kind of mumbling, and I didn't know what to do. And and I was struggling with this, and he comes over and says, Excuse me, would you like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And I said, Well, yeah, I guess so. And he says, Do you think the Holy Spirit's in the room? And I said, um, Yeah, I think so. And he says, Do you think he wants to float around the room? I thought, What kind of a guy is this? Or would you like him to come inside? And I said, well, I'd kind of like him to come inside. He says, why don't you open the door and let him in? I looked around. I couldn't see a door. He says, here's the door. This is the most unruly member of the tongue. If you'll yield your tongue, God will fill you. And he gets up and walks away. He says, cheerio. <laughs> and he leaves me. Between you and God. So I thought, well, okay, am I going to yield it or am I going to keep a hold of it? So I thought, well, let's give it a try. I literally said that, and I started to speak in tongues Hallelujah. for three hours. It was midnight when I got out of that, and I was sorry to leave it, but every day since, that's how we do it. Do you know that... Um when I first uh, had prayer for baptism in the Holy Spirit, in my thoughts I had said, I'd rather not have the tongues, you know, the heavenly language is a nice way to call it. And um, then some years later, I was at a Women Aglow, and they were singing in the Spirit and had my eyes closed, Mel, and I thought I got translated to heaven. I was sure when I opened my eyes, I was going to see angels around with wings and the whole ten yards, you know. And I opened my eyes and I was still on planet Earth. And then I went home and I sat in my car, took my hand on the steering wheel, and I said, God, I want what they had, because they were singing in the heavenly language. And then when I read in the Bible in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, check it out, dear ones, it says, Paul spoke in tongues above them all, and look how strong he was. So I, I speak in my heavenly language every day, and I'm sure you do, as well as a whole lot of Amen. English. Some, so, somebody said it's sort of like, shoes, the tongues automatically come with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I, I want to hear more about the ministry call, and we'll have you on ne next next telecast, and what a joy to hear about you, and uh, how God got hold of your life. Oh, by the way, the first time I went into a Pentecostal church, I thought, as soon as I stepped in the door, you know, they had the, the saxophones and uh, drums and everything, I thought, oh, they got a party for God, and I'm invited. <laughs> That's what I thought of a Pentecostal church, yeah. my first experience from a Catholic background. In any case, we'll talk to you again okay. soon. Thank you, Mel. God bless. Come, they told me, pa -rum -pa -pum -pum. a newborn came to see, pa -rum -pa -pum -pum. our finest gifts we bring, pa -rum -pa -pum -pum. To lay before our king, rumpa bum bum, rumpa bum bum, rumpa bum bum. So to honor him, rumpa bum bum, when we come, little baby, rumpa bum bum. I am a poor boy too, rumpa bum bum. I have no gift to bring, pa rum pa pum pum That's fit to give a king, pa rum pa pum pum Rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum 
Shall I play for you a rum pum 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 on my drum? Mary nodded pa rum pum pum pum. The ox and lamb kept time pa rum pum pum pum. I played my drum for him pa rum pum pum pum. I played my best for him, ba rum a bum bum, rum a bum bum, rum a pum pum. Then he smiled at me, ba rum a pum pum, me and my drum. Thank you, Roxana Dane, my dear niece, for that wonderful song, The Little Drummer Boy. It was a lot of years before I paid attention to the words in that song. I'm a little lad. Uh, apparently came to Jesus and said uh, he, he was poor, he didn't have anything to offer, but he had a drum and he knew how to play drums. And he said to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in this, this beautiful song, shall I play on my drum for him? And she nodded and said yes. And then at the end of him playing on his drums, which is all he had to offer Jesus, it says the Lord smiled at him. What can you and I give Jesus Christ as I soon go into the Christmas story? The greatest gift we can give him is a bit like what he gave us. Jesus Christ gave us his whole life as a sacrifice for you and me on the cross of Calvary. And Jesus Christ, I believe, wants you and I to give him our whole lives. Now, why would we do that, precious ones? He bought and paid for us in his holy shed blood. What a dear price. It shows how valuable you and I are to God. He paid a very dear, he paid a very dear price for us, shed holy blood. And he has said very clearly to my heart, if we want all the blessings that God has for us and strength from Him in trying times, so the trying times will even stretch our faith muscle and will come out pure gold, we need to give Him our all. Don't hold anything back. Now, the Christmas story is about a virgin having a child in her womb. And I'm going to share some insight about the Christmas story that you may have not have thought before that can relate to you and me. Let's hear the Christmas story. A true story again, I say. Christ's birth is announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, and the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Then the angel said to her, First she was troubled seeing this angel and considered what manner of greeting was this. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. In the book of Proverbs 3, it says, If, that's our part, if you buy mercy and truth about your neck, write it in the table of your heart, so you will find favor with God and mankind. Well, I assume that Mary had done that. She had bound mercy and truth about her neck and the table of her heart. She was in the Bible. She was loving God. She was a precious moral woman of God. And then it says... The angel said, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and she'll call his name Jesus. Jesus means Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. And also, Jesus is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Joshua. The Lord is salvation. And then verse 33 in Luke chapter 1. And the word of God says, 32. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, Now how can this be, since I do not know a man? Which means Mary had not been intimate with a man, which is the way you generally conceive children in this world. Amen? 
But the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, this means that uh, Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, was conceived in the Virgin Mary's womb by a miracle of the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. And this was needed for the seed, the babe of Mary, to be holy. I want you to know by the process of osmosis, the blood of the mother never touches the baby. And so, because the Holy Spirit had overshadowed Mary, placed baby God in her womb to be born as a baby. It's so precious God did that, you know. We can never say down here that God doesn't understand what it's like to be in a human form, because he sure does. Hallelujah. He understands how you feel, beloved. God understands. When you hurt, he understands what it's like to be hurt. And he loves you, and he wants to help. Amen. On with this true Christmas story. Verse 36. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, which was a miracle. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Mary said to this angel, Gabriel, that was telling her about this going to happen. She said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Oh, how my heart cries to God, and I hope yours will too. Let it be according to your word in my life. When God speaks something to us, let us say, according to your word, so be it, my Lord. Let him be God, and let us be the people. Amen. That's where you'll have life and have it more abundantly. Yield to the Lord like Mary did. He said, let it to me unto me according to your word. Because Gabriel was speaking the word of the Lord to Mary, and she knew it. She knew it, and she was obedient. Praise the Lord. Now Mary visits Elizabeth, who is uh, now expecting John the Baptist. Verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Pay close attention to what happened when Mary, who has baby Lord Jesus, God in her womb, greets Elizabeth, who is expecting, and that was a miracle too. Listen what happened. And it happened when Elizabeth expecting John the Baptist, heard the greeting of Mary, and the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, baby Jesus, God, in the womb of Virgin Mary, when she greeted Elizabeth, hallelujah, the mother-to-be of John the Baptist, then a miracle happened. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth. Hallelujah. You know what that says to me? If Christ is formed in you and I, Christ having his way in and through you and I, we can greet someone, we can pray for someone, and they too will be filled with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit in God's children overflowing to touch the people. I believe in the Holy Spirit is so strong in my life. He's flowing right now through the airwaves to touch your life and help you see this is a true Christmas story. And I want Christ to be strong in my life. So when I greet people and pray for people, the Holy Spirit will touch them. Hallelujah. To me, that's incredible insight. Because yes, Mary had God in her as a baby. But Christians, you have Christ in you, hope of glory. And Colossians 1, God wills, which means it's his desire for you. Well, God wills that all mankind be saved, have Jesus Christ as Lord. But God also wills, he wills, Colossians 1, that you would know to your experience level Christ in you, hope of glory. And oh, this is such a prayer of my heart. This is such a prayer of my heart that I would know Christ in me, hope of glory. 
You see, dear ones, that was a key to St. Paul being so strong. He wrote most of the New Testament. And he was shipwrecked, and he was stoned, and he was left for dead. In fact, the Bible says at one point they stoned him so bad they left him for dead, and the way they went, the, the, the people of God rallied around and prayed for him, and the Bible says he rose. And the next day in another city, which he likely walked to, he was having revival. This man that wrote most of the New Testament, he suffered a lot. And it says in Colossians 1:29. Paul said, I labor striving according to God's power that works in me mightily. That's Colossians 1.29. And then that power is in Colossians 1.27. God wills that we would know Christ in us, hope of glory. What I'm trying to say is that Mary knew Jesus in him, in her as a baby, flesh and blood Jesus. But you can know, you and I can know Jesus by the Holy Spirit in us. Christ in me, hope of glory. Touch your heart by the Holy Spirit to know there's more than we ever dreamed of as we follow Jesus Christ and we be obedient. As we give him our whole life, he will give us all of him. Really, it is the right thing to do for Christ gave his life for you. So as we celebrate in this Christmas season, as we uh, go about the busyness of preparing things, and I know what it's like because I often give gifts to people in our fellowship and to my team and to my family. I've got a big family, <laughs> about 100 relatives in the Lower Mainland. I don't give gifts to all of them. <laughs> but there is children, grandchildren, my husband and all. And you know, let us not be so caught up with the busyness of Christmas that we forget that Christ is the reason for the season. Take time to honor King Jesus. If he's in your heart and you've confessed Jesus Christ is Lord, he is with you and he is the reason for this season. And think of the opportunity to tell of the love of Jesus at the Christmas time. I find this is a better time of year to witness about the love of Jesus to the unsaved than ever any other time of the year. Because in the shopping stores, especially in certain nations like North America, countries like North America, the Christmas story is actually being played in the department stores, the shopping centers where we buy our food. And they often have really good Christmas songs. And it kind of the, the songs that are truth about Jesus are touching the people's hearts. And they're usually more open to hear the good news. Do you realize that when you tell someone that God loves them, God, who is a God of love, will quicken that to them? When you go in restaurants, if you're driving, where you buy your gas, witness to people. Share the true Christmas story. God so loved the world that he gave Jesus Christ, a babe in the flesh, who took all our sins, sicknesses, pains, griefs, and sorrows, and died for us. And he rose from the dead. And precious ones, he wants to live in your heart. He lives in my heart. He wants to live in yours. And it only happens. He's not like the devil that pushes and shoves that came to rob, steal, and destroy. He's a loving God that will only comes in when you ask him in. If you open the door, he knocks on the door of your heart. If you open your door and say, Lord Jesus, come in. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my God. And then be careful, confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Do that today. Phone in and someone will help you grow and know Christ the Lord in you. Amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. In appreciation of your gift of $20 or more, we are pleased to offer a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Sharing in the last few moments of this telecast from my heart in Christ to your dear hearts. And I know it's a Christmas season and I'm thankful to God that some of you are watching. 
But let us think in this busyness of this Christmas season, the most important thing you can give is love and kindness and encouragement to people. Loved ones, friends, they all need that at this tender time. People get so busy, so caught up, and some feel bad because they don't have money to buy gifts for people they love. I'll never forget the year that one of my dear relatives, who every year was faithful to give me a gift, said, you know, things are a little tight this year. How about we recycle gifts? And I think he gave me the movie Titanic. (laughs) Had already been used. But you know, it's not about gifts, it's about love. A hug, a smile, a phone call. I'm thinking of you, I love you. That's what Christmas is all about. In fact, deeper than that, it's all about Jesus. May the love of God be shed so abroad in our hearts that we would have hope, not be ashamed. And whatever we have in this Christmas season, God be with us. And you know, little in the hands of God. He's perfectly able to multiply it. Look what he did with the fishes and the two loaves. (laughs) And it's my prayer as we come to a close, that I would pray Isaiah 10, 27 for you folks. With the busyness of Christmas, I think many of us need the anointing of God's Holy Spirit to come that lifts the cares, lifts the burdens, and give us His strength to sail through His season in the power of the Holy Spirit, and even to pray for healing for some of you broken hearts. If you have no one dear to spend Christmas with, always remember that Christ is with you and He's as close as a whisper of His name. Be sure you have Jesus in your heart. And then you could say with me, I'm never alone. I always have you, Jesus. Prayer, line, person will help you know Christ. He's a reason for the season. He will set you free. So no, do not commit suicide. That's not the answer. Give your whole life to Jesus. Give your whole life to Christ and he will give you life and give it to you more abundantly in the name of Jesus. Hear my cry from my Father God's Almighty's heart to yours. Don't give up. Don't give up. Better days are around the corner as you receive Christ and yield to Him. Let's pray. O oh God Almighty, I pray, Almighty God, for an anointing upon these, these viewers, Lord God. The anointing that destroys yokes, that lifts our cares, lifts our burdens. O oh, Father, reveal your love to each one and comfort them that are hurting. Comfort them. Help them to know they can live and have life more abundantly with Jesus Christ as Lord. Encourage their hearts, Father. Reveal your love to them and the real meaning of Christmas. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.